Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and the Equilibrium and Acid Reactions topic. This is video number nine. We're going to look at equilibria and collision theory. So the key to this particular section is to uh, recall what we know both about equilibrium and also about collision theory and see if we can bring these two concepts together to give us a bit more of an idea about exactly what uh, is going on here. So the first thing we need to do is um, to briefly e review equilibrium, where we know we have to have a closed system. We need to have a dynamic process where the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And we also need to recall that there are no more macroscopic changes. So if the um, reaction system was changing color uh, as the reaction proceeded there would be a point where we would see no further color change and that would be a macroscopic property if there was a temperature increase then we would find that the temperature uh, stabilized at some point whatever that might be um, so for a um, application then of collision theory what we need to do is to uh, i guess look at the fact that when we start any reaction we're going to have our maximum value for the reactants and we're going to have zero products as the reaction proceeds the number of particles of the products increases and the number of particles of the reactants will decrease at some point there may be sufficient energy for the particles of product to actually interact with one another and reform the reactants the numbers of particles are very important and so are the combinations you can see that if we had um, just a single particle of a and we were looking at uh, creating a reaction in the um, interaction between A and a second substance B then by uh, adding just one more particle uh, we've gone from two to four collisions if we add one more particle of A then now we have gone from four to six different collisions and likewise if we were to add another particle of B we would now have um, nine possible collisions that may potentially create a reaction. Now, collision theory is not just about um, particles colliding, but it's also about sufficient energy. So we know we've talked about the uh, activation energy that is required for a reaction to proceed, and we need to make sure that the amount of energy that is needed for this reaction is sufficient during each of these collisions. Now, there are a couple of different things that can affect that amount of energy. Temperature increase does generally increase reaction rate, uh, and the use of a catalyst can lower the activation energy. But whenever we're looking at any reaction, um, whether it be an endothermic or an exothermic, there's a difference in the amount of activation energy for the forward reaction to what there is for the reverse reaction. So we need to make sure that we have um, made those very clear in terms of our um, activation energy for both forward and reverse reactions um, and the fact that those collisions must occur with sufficient energy in order for both of those to actually occur. It means once we do that, of course, that we can start to look at things like increasing pressure at how at perhaps through a decrease in volume which is actually pushing the particles closer together more likely for collisions to occur um, increasing the temperature is going to make the particles move faster and therefore uh, is more likely to increase the rate of collisions uh, increasing the concentration is what we looked at over here and um, again more particles means more opportunities for collisions and hence uh, an increase in the reaction rate and what we want is to make sure that we end up with reaction rates that are equal for the forward and reverse reactions now one thing just to quickly look at before we finish this video is uh, this area of stereochemistry okay 
we've got to remember that we are dealing with three dimensional collisions. And this is what makes life very difficult because we're trying to model processes in two dimensions that are actually occurring in three. One of, the, one of the things that's important in collisions is not just how often they occur or how much energy they have, but also the orientation. So you can see here we've got a collision between a particle of hydrogen and chlorine, so hydrogen chloride, and here a double bonded um, hydrocarbon. This one is ethene. Now, in this region here, we have a very high density of electrons, so a very strong electronegative region. For this molecule, we have polarity. The polarity is created by um, the greater electronegativity of the chlorine than the hydrogen, which means we get a slightly negative, slightly positive region happening here. Over here, slightly positive, slightly negative. You can see for the one that uh, we've said will um, provide a successful collision and reaction is where this very negative region of concentrated electrons um, is hit by this positive region where the hydrogen is coming in. Two negative regions effectively running into each other or um, coming in from the side and these bonds here are non-polar and so there being no interaction between them. This uh, additional factor can affect collisions as well. So it cannot just be a factor of how many particles and how much energy the particles have, but also the orientation of those particles and how they approach one another as to whether the reaction occurs. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of some of the ways that we can use our understanding of particles and collisions of those particles to relate to chemical reactions and specifically equilibrium. Thanks for watching.